Everyone thinks man coming at you. In last week's video, we took a closer look at the client implementation through WebXR and the browser in regards to this VR streaming architecture. So the flip side here is to take a look at the server. And to be very specific, what I mean by the server is our render streaming solution when we kind of put those three pillars together of the browser and the VR headset. So this is our Unity instance that is responsible for rendering out graphics and listening for the device input that we can then use to appropriately adjust the frames that we send back to the browser right here. Later in the video, we'll be taking a look at that SDK that makes this all happen. I will say at the time of recording, this is still a little bit experimental, but it is available on GitHub if you want to try this out. I'll have future videos that are dedicated towards explaining how you can integrate this into your own projects as well. But we'll just go over the high level implementation and how things work and what are the things that you should be aware of when using this SDK. If you've already tried out the SDK from Twitter, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Would love to get any feedback as to what are things that could be improved to make your life easier when using it. Because again, this is ultimately the vision towards breaking out of the walled garden that is Oculus. For starters, let me talk about one of the key advantages that you get by doing this render streaming with the server. I posted on Twitter a couple weeks back this video of rendering using the high definition render pipeline in Unity, streaming that to Oculus Quest, which does not support high definition rendering, and also getting that working within WebXR, which by itself does not support high definition render pipeline. So if you need that high fidelity graphics to really make your use case in application or game stand out, this is one of those approaches that you can really take to, to do this. And I think that in and of itself, among the many other advantages that you get in terms of privacy in terms of whatever application you want to build and that's not confined to the requirements of Oculus, you get all of that flexibility in this approach. And I think that really can't be understated enough. So server here means render streaming and means getting that frames from Unity. And this server can live pretty much anywhere. It can be your local laptop, which is where I do a ton of my own testing. It can be on a local computer, what we refer to as an edge, could be on a 5G network. It could also be out in the cloud. Now, while that where to place this is a topic for a separate video, obviously the closer you are to the streaming source, the lower your latency. The lower your latency means the higher frame rate you get, which means you're not gonna get sim sick, which is the high requirement for virtual reality. So I think that kind of gives the broader picture of what we're looking at. If we switch over to Unity, this is a sample scene that has the experimental SDK implemented. You can see here, it's just a prefab that's built off of Unity render streaming. And there's a couple key components here. So the first one is this WebXR camera. The second one is our render streaming components that are built off of the Unity render streaming. So with render streaming, you specify a WebRTC server. So I have a solution hosted on Google Cloud, which we'll take a look at in a separate video. You specify the ICE servers, and this needs to match with whatever the browser is looking for. So for simplicity, we keep this to stun. And the nice part is this still works regardless of you're on the cloud or local. The stun server is able to make those connections in, in either case, which I think is really awesome. One key component is this hardware encoding. So hardware encoding and GPUs is a topic we'll go through again also in a separate video, but hardware encoders are predefined logic that's baked into a GPU. Now in the context of Unity, this is only going to be applicable for NVIDIA GPUs, but it's incredibly valuable when you're looking at VR render streaming because it drastically lowers the computational latency that you need to render out a frame and send it out to the client to be viewed. And quite frankly, without hardware encoding, it's really not even worth taking a look at this implementation because of the fact that it becomes so slow and your frame rate drops significantly without the hardware encoding from that 
ideal case of 90 plus frames per second all the way down to i think i've seen 40 50 30 somewhere in that range it makes a big difference i mean sure we're talking about a third technically but still that's that's significant in the context of vr so in my mind hardware encoding is pretty much a requirement when it comes to using vr render streaming and the last part here is what is the data that we're planning to broadcast so we're planning to broadcast the camera feeds as well as the audio feed as well as a data channel that we communicate over the with the client and i didn't talk too much about the data channel in our client video but I think it's an incredibly valuable piece of the puzzle that makes all of this magic happen. Here you can see our VR input manager, and this is all communicating with the data channel. So the data channel here will simply give us the data almost on an on-frame basis that we can then apply onto our heads and hands. And we also can listen in for device input. So whether you pressed the A button or B button, or any of the triggers on your controllers, that data can be passed in from the WebXR APIs to the client and then listened to as part of your own game logic. The only other things that we're doing is attaching some of the render streaming components on. So if you have to stream the camera, you can go ahead and stream that here. You could see that this size is defined for the specific eye resolution for your given headset. So in this case, we're just using base Oculus Quest. You can increase this if you like for Quest 2 or headsets that need it. Also decrease it if you have less resolution, but it's very flexible as far as being able to uh, adjust that to fit the given device that you're using. One other thing while we're looking at the camera is you'll notice that there's a slight offset here for rendering purposes. This is for your IPD. Now, IPD, as a brief summary, stands for interpupillary distance. We talked a little bit about this during our client video. But the important part about IPD is that it is what allows you to make your application flexible enough for various different people who have different eyes and different interpupillary distance. And that's important to make sure that the application runs smoothly and is comfortable regardless of someone's physiological state. Now in this experimental version, I haven't encoded in any specific way so that you can change IPD, but that's a very important part of making sure that this all works very smoothly. And the way this is set up is this is a drag and drop prefab. If you have the correct WebRTC server implemented and the correct stun server, you can actually just go to the client browser and it'll automatically connect for your application and you can start streaming pretty much at that instance as long as your game can run. So there are of course limitations when it comes to different operating systems that which we'll cover in future videos, but that's aside, it's really designed to be super simple for you to go ahead, drag and drop this and get this working. In the current implementation with this bare bones kind of prefab, all it really does is just handle the VR streaming. But it's designed in a way that's pretty flexible thanks to the Unity render streaming package so that I think in the future, I'd love to go through the process of being able to use the same instance, stream out to multiple different VR headsets, or stream one version that's for VR, one that's for just a web client, or it's just someone connected through a PC, and have that flexibility, which is really possible thanks to the VR render streaming application and flexibility of how they've implemented that. I think that would be an incredibly powerful way to use this render streaming solution and then it kind of opens the door to being really flexible in the types of VR games that you're able to build, which I personally think is really exciting. Before wrapping this up, I'd love to know based on what we've seen here, what are some of those features you'd like to see added to this SDK? I know it's still pretty bare bones right now, but I think it's a good proof of concept of where this could go. And I think there's a lot of improvements that can be made to make this something that is actually commercially viable and consumable by Quest users, Vive users, some other headset, you name it. As long as you support the WebXR APIs, that you'll be able to use this in a commercial fashion. And I think that's really what I think we're all really excited for, is being able to use open standards to build a really immersive application that no one is, has the ability to censor. So I think I'll leave that for now. 
while I'm continuing to work on the SDK, we'll have a few more videos here on the channel that dive a little bit into, as I mentioned, GPUs, as well as operating systems. And then as this SDK starts to mature, we'll start to have guides here on the channel that really show you how you can actually build this out into your own applications. So look forward to all of that. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing so that you don't miss any of those videos. Until next time, it's been Peace, man.